Hey, do you want to know how to automate the use of Google Sheet with Make.com? Oh wow, you must have read the title of the video because that's exactly what we're going to talk about. In this tutorial, we will see how to use your Google Sheet file as a data source, go through each row of your file, retrieve all the information from each row, search for a specific row, and finally update your file. I believe that with all of this, we will be able to have a lot of fun with our Google Sheet. Hello my kitten, my name is Sebastian Griot, I have been doing SEO since 2009 and right now you are watching SEO Addict. Here we talk about tutorials, tips, tricks and all that for SEO. Listen, do you know what you need to do? You subscribe, you like and you leave a comment. If you didn't know, now you will. This video is more than just a simple explanation of the Google Sheet module. It is part of a continuity. The goal in the end is to be able to automate 100% of our SEO content production. And between you and me, it's already working. And to be able to achieve this, you need to know two to three modules, including the Google Sheet module, of course. It goes without saying that it's always better to say it. Of course, to use Make with Google Sheet, you will need a Google account and a Make account. If you don't have a Make account, click on the link in the description. This is an affiliate link. But hey, I guess if you're currently looking at this rate, it means you already have your account. So you know what? Let's go for it. To start this tutorial, head over to Make, of course. So what I suggest is to start with Make and Google Sheet by using it as a data source. For that, we will click on the plus sign and look for the Google Sheet element. Once you get there, you will look for the function Watch a New Home. Normally, the first thing you need to do is connect your Google account. Well here, I think you really don't need me. You click on Signing, follow the procedure, and from there, you will have access to all your Google Sheet files. So I don't think there will be a big surprise in using this module. You'll see, it's super simple. So what we're doing here is that we have several methods. Here, what we are going to do is a search by path. Here, you have the option to access your different drives. We will take My Drive, then to find your Google Sheet file, you click on it, you will see the list of all your files appearing, and we are going to use a file that has already been prepared, and you know what, we are going to look at this file right away. So here we are on Google Sheet, this is the file that will be used as the data source, as the trigger source for my automations. As you can see, we will have several pieces of information. Here, it is related to the tutorial on automating content creation. So we will have an article title, a category, and an ID. Next, the other columns are meant to be filled automatically by Mike. So now that we know what our file looks like, we go back to Mike. So back on Make, I have selected the right file, and now I will select the tab. I indicate to him that my file contains headers, and here we will specify the cells that we want to retrieve. As you can see, the file will stop at J, so going up the columns to Z is more than enough. Next. We specify the number of values we want to be retrieved at each iteration of the automation. Since we want to process row by row, we will set it to 1 and then we will click OK. So here, it asks us from which ID we want to start and we will tell it from all, so it starts from the beginning of the file. But if I wanted to start from a specific ID, I would just indicate it right here. So what will happen with our automation is that each time it is triggered, it will call Google Sheet and look at the last row that it had not consulted until then. There are two ways to do it. I can either run my execution on a case-by-case -case basis, or I can schedule it and set a rhythm for updates. So just for your information, this is exactly how I will start the automation process in creating our automatic articles on WordPress with Make. If I go back to the process now, I find this watch neuro here, where I will precisely bring up elements, one by one. But once I have retrieved this line, what can I do with it? So to see what we are going to do with it, Let's take a look at the next module, here the ChatGPT module, and this will allow us to display all the variables that have been retrieved by my watch neuro. To be able to see this information, I can find it right here. Here I can see the name of the item as well as its ID. If I zoom in, I can see the ID and the name of the item. Since the scenario has already been played, I find all the elements that are returned by the Excel file already instantiated. That's why the line is already at seven here. And this will allow us, for example, to see the title of the article that is retrieved by this number. So you see my little kitten, the least we can say is that it's really very basic. I'm connecting my module. And on the other side, I can come and retrieve all the data that is inside my rows. Another interesting way to use the Google Sheet part in automatic mode is to search for a specific element, filter your Google Sheet file, and retrieve the result of the filter. For that, we will always use the Google Sheet module. But this time, what we are going to do is use the search rows part. Here, I already have it in my scenario, so I'm going to open it. It's always the same thing. I will find at the top the connection to my Google files, 
the drive method I will use, the Google Sheet we will take into account, the sheet we will use, and then we indicate whether our file contains headers, the columns we want to work on, and here we will work on our filter. So how does my filter work? Here, what we are going to do is indicate the column on which we want to apply the filter, and we will have several filter modes. Here, my filter is a text filter. I want to look at the name of the category that is inside, so I will set text operator 2. If I were dealing with a numerical value, for example, I would focus on the numerical operator part. And the same goes for the date part, for instance. How does my filter work? Once I have specified the column, I will indicate the value to be searched within the filter. And for that, we will use the category that corresponds to the article of the current row being read. As we can see here, it will be practical advice that will filter. And finally, to avoid having my filter return cells where I don't have a link inside, I will specify column E, the pod link column, as you can see. Right here, there should be an element that exists because, for example, I can find practical advice here. I don't want it to return this row. In truth, I only want it to return the rows where I already have a link available. So that's why here we will indicate that it must have something inside, so it exists. Once that is done, I can indicate how I want to sort my information, how I want to group them, if I wish to group them. And here I specify the number of items I want this filter to return each time, for example 5. Once that's done, we click OK. Very well, I know how to use Google Sheets to pull data and to retrieve specific data. Now, we will see how to update a row directly in your Google Sheet. Okay, so to be able to update a row, no surprise, I go to my Google Sheet, I look for, hold on tight, the update row function, very surprising, and from there, we will see how it works. Always the same thing, I take my scenario again, and we will see how I handle this information in my scenario. We reuse our basic connection. You'll see, once you've made a connection and inserted your module into your scenario, it will immediately take the default connection. Next, it's always the same thing. Search method, your drive, your spreadsheet ID, your sheet name. Just keep in mind that from there, there are no surprises. And here, maybe something a little more surprising, we are going to take an incident. Here, it will ask you which row to update. How can you know which row you are currently working on? Well, it's very simple. Google Sheet will tell you. So, we are going to look at the elements that are returned by our watch new row element that we set up at the beginning of our scenario. And there we will see something. The very first element that is returned is the row number, the number of the row. And so here we know that we are currently on row 7. Finally, I will always have the same thing, to know if my table contains headers. And here I will find all the headers of my table. And after that, you are free to update the appropriate cell. So here, for example, in the publish column, we have set it to illustrate. This is a status that will be used later to apply filters and trigger other automated events. Once that's done, you click OK. And ouch, you just set up an automation that will update your Google Sheets files by itself. So my kitten, it's really easy to use Make and Google Sheet. You can use it as a data source. You can fetch elements directly inside. You can automatically update your Google Sheet file. From there, I think you have all the keys to start having fun. As you may have noticed, there are still quite a few functions that we haven't looked into. So I invite you to let me know in the comments which functions you prefer when using Google Sheet and Make.com. Come on, stay curious.